A state of emergency has been declared and the Prime Minister, Rani Wickram Singh, has told the military to do whatever is necessary to restore order after protesters stormed his office complex. The President, Gotabaya Rajpaksa, has now fled the country as Sri Lanka suffers from the worst economic crisis in decades. Tens of thousands took to the streets to demonstrate against the President and the administration that he's led. They're all being blamed now for allowing this crisis to grow. Sri Lanka's economy is suffering shortages of food and fuel. And the currency has lost nearly half its value on the financial markets. Our South Asia correspondent, Rajini Vajanathan, camera journalist Jack Garland and producer Scarlett Barter have spent the day among the crowds outside the Prime Minister's office in Colombo. Their target heavily guarded. Their mood determined. As news spread that Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe had just been made acting president, crowds gathered in front of his office. One of the few government buildings not yet occupied by protesters. Protesters are chanting that Ranil Wickremesinghe, the Prime Minister, is a thief. They don't just want President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to step down, they want the whole political class to leave and they want to change. And this is how they're pushing for that change. A mass movement born out of economic hardship, sending a message to those in power. We don't want violence and we don't want to hit or something to that prime minister who trying to be a president right now. We only want, please resign. But it didn't take long for security forces to use tear gas and water cannons. Well, they just fired tear gas and protesters have tried to make their way into the Prime Minister's office. But as you can see, they didn't manage. And there's a lot of security presence there. Some protesters still trying to climb in. And just over the gate, you can see inside there now just how many members of the security forces are in there. And we can feel the tear gas on our skin now. A lot of people here have been tear gassed, but they're not giving up. They still want to get inside. Then a breakthrough. numbering and overpowering the police. Yet another protected building overrun by protesters. Well, this is quite an extraordinary moment. After hours of trying to make their way in, they've finally done it. Protesters have pushed their way through the gates of the Prime Minister's office. And they are everywhere. The security forces, the police, all the old guards, they're nowhere to be seen. Another public building here in Sri Lanka, which has now been occupied by the people, it really is But where does that moment go next? Why did you come here today? Uh, to help my country. I like my country, so I want to get to here and help my country. But who can save it? As they celebrate, Sri Lankans are still suffering. After taking government buildings, who do they trust to take power? Regini Vadinavan, BBC News, Colombo. Well, as we heard, this week's demonstrations in Sri Lanka follow months of economic turmoil, which has brought misery to millions of people across the country. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landell is with me here in the studio to explain more about what's led to this chaos in recent days. James? Hugh, Sri Lanka is in real difficulties at the moment. First of all, there's almost complete economic collapse. Inflation is more than 50%, food prices soaring up 80% and transport costs more than doubling. And that's having a real impact. There are about 22 million people in Sri Lanka and the UN Food Programme says that more than six million of them don't know where their next meal is coming from. 
So why is the economy in such dire straits? Well, tourism, a major source of foreign revenues, has been devastated, first by the terrorist bombings in 2019 and then by the COVID pandemic. The war in Ukraine has also added to rising food and fuel prices. And the global downturn has meant that Sri Lankans living overseas have sent less money home. But the protesters also blame this man, the outgoing President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, part of a family dynasty that's dominated politics here for two decades. Now, he banned fertiliser imports, supposedly to make Sri Lanka more organic, but it devastated the rice crop and led to food shortages. He also cut taxes, but this left the government struggling to pay its bills. And he borrowed heavily, leaving foreign debt worth $50 billion, much of it owed to China, and servicing that has drained currency reserves, leaving little left to buy food imports. And so the president has now fled, leaving a political vacuum as MPs struggle to agree, possibly some kind of unity government. And all that matters because without a stable government, Sri Lanka may struggle to win international support. It's already discussing a possible bailout from the International Monetary Fund and it's talking to China about its debt. So there is an uncertain future for a strategically important island nation where economic crisis has now been followed by political upheaval. Hugh. James, many thanks. James Landell, there, our diplomatic correspondent, the crisis in Sri Lanka.